using this checklist throughout and oh <laughs> it's upside down hi welcome back to my channel I'm MK cosplay and this week we are finally finally going to be starting the process for Katara disguise cosplay a few weeks ago I put out this video here and I'll link it here here or in the description below in that video I basically go over my process for cos planning and my budget and what I'm gonna be doing each week so this is going to be a series of three to four videos with two to three weeks of the cos plan in each video it's gonna be a party in here and if you have already seen my cos planning video this checklist might be a little familiar. I'm going to be using this checklist throughout and oh <laughs> it's upside down so if you have already seen my cause planning video this checklist might seem a little familiar it's all of my steps that I'm going to be using and I will put it up right here after I go through each step let's get started the materials you need for this first one is clean wrap, duct tape, a pair of scissors, and a sharpie. This first step will be easier if you have a second person to help you. But I don't have anyone at the moment, so if you don't have anyone either, well, we can struggle together. Watch as I am attempting to wrap myself in clean wrap. You won't need to go all the way down since her top is a belly shirt. Try your best to get the plastic over your right shoulder. Take the duct tape and pull off long strips and cover yourself. I do not cover my back, but that's okay. I make a pattern later on in the video. It will come out cleaner if you make the tape flatter without any wrinkles. Now that we've got this duct tape torso, we need to trace our pattern. I make rough marks and I'll clean it up later. Now we need to cut off the duct tape torso. Be very cautious. I cut off the excess clean wrap later. After cutting the duct tape pattern off yourself, cut your pattern out. Lay it out on paper. I used gift wrap that I got on sale. We will need to trace the pattern out and add seam allowance. I add half inch seam allowance around the pattern. I darken my lines after creating the marks. Don't forget to add your dashes to ensure the fabric aligns. Now that the pattern is made, we will need to cut it out and create the pattern for the back piece. For doing this, I take my front piece to use as a guide. I draw the dashes first. I mark the bottom corners and use my ruler to connect them. I also connect the shoulder and side seams. The only thing we really need to change is the top hemline. And now, cut the pattern out. The last pattern we need for the top are the straps. I rough out a triangular pattern and cut it out.
We can check it off the list now. Next is setting the pattern on the fabric and cutting it out. You're going to need fabric scissors and pins or weights and something to mark with. I got this fabric on fabric.com for $26.44. I chose this stretchy fabric to make it easier to get in and out of. Set your pattern on the fabric and pin it down. Once you get your pieces cut out, use a dress form or your body to shape it. Carefully remove it so you can mark the adjustments. Now we prep to sew. I start pinning the straps and sew them off camera. I cut off the excess fabric before turning them. I align the sides and pin the straps in between. We want the strap to be on the outside, so sew it in between the right sides. I sew it off camera. You can see what I mean with the strap here. After sewing the sides, sew the shoulder. I put it on to see where I needed to hem it and I end up using my dress form anyway. After, after pinning the hemline, I take it to the machine queen. I use a zigzag stitch because the fabric is stretchy. After finished sewing it, I ended up not liking it, so I had to make some more adjustments. I pin it so I can make it more flat. I mark where I needed to sew, then I seam rip and repin, and it ended up turning out less wrinkled. Keep watching to see how it looks on me in the end. Now we need to make our bottoms. I found these patterns in my stock. I'll be using these ones, but modifying them. They have included instructions, but we don't need those. It's time to cut the pattern out. I'll be using the same checklist as the top. I found this fabric at Joann's in Arizona when I was visiting my sister and it's this pomegranate color and it was on sale for $5.59 a yard so I got two yard. You can see here I'm just going through the same steps, pin, cut, yada yada. And I had to dye my fabric. I used a mix of these dyes. If you want to know how to dye your fabric then let me know in the comments if you want to see me make a video on how to dye fabric. In the meantime, I make myself a cup of coffee. So I forgot to film this part of the process, but to modify this pattern, all I did was instead of adding the bands at the bottom of the pants, I just added a hemline. And I also added a waistband because they were riding up a little bit too much and I wanted them to be a bit longer. Now it's time for the middle layer. Here I am just tracing the pattern and roughing out a sketch where I want to cut out the pattern for the bottom detailing. I add my seam allowance and now it's time to cut it out. Time to set it on the fabric and I got this fabric on fabric.com for $13.72. I decide that I'm going to attach this by sewing on the edges and I'm going to attach the upper part by hot gluing it down. This is what it looks like after I'm done sewing the edges. I sew up the side seams and I don't sew it all the way down because Katara has some openings at the bottom for extra movement. Before I hem the bottom edge, I mark where I need to cut off the excess so I can 
have the correct size and where I need to sew on my waistband. Sew on the waistband and now it's time to hem the bottom. Glue down the top of the detailing And this is how it turned out. It's finally time for the last layer. If I were to do something different with this pattern, I would have made it longer. It comes up a little short on me, so I will probably go back later and fix this. I make it double layered so it's a little bit thicker. I put the right sides together and sew it, leaving a little opening where I can turn it right side out. I also have to dye this lighter red fabric to make it a little bit darker, and I just do that off camera. When I'm cutting the detailing, I trace out the pattern because this is a like silky fabric and it's kind of hard to cut so I needed some extra assistance. I decided that since this fabric is so silky that I was just going to hot glue the edges and then hot glue it onto my other fabric because it would have been really hard to sew it on. But if I were to do this again in the future, I would probably try to attempt and sew it on and it might come out a little bit neater. <laughs> So this is what it looks like and now I have to sew both halves together and after that I just sew the extra flaps down. This part of the process ended up taking longer than I anticipated. There are three layers to the bottoms and I took three weeks to complete them. So this is how it turned out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons. I really hope this video helped with your cosplay journey. Leave any comments you may have down below.